Hello there, I'm Adam Short and I'm with Short Financial Group. I am a Intuit QuickBooks Online Advanced Certified Pro Advisor. Today I want to show you a couple features and how to enter and process invoices in QBO. We are in the QBO test drive file, which is accessible by anyone for free. If you Google QBO test drive, it will take you to Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. And this is a uh, make-believe company that allows you to experiment and play around with QuickBooks to get comfortable. So here we are, we're in the main screen. And on the left sidebar, we have our main navigation and we're going to click customers. Now, some of you may see clients and sales in this uh, particular navigation option, but in our case, it's customers. We'll click that and here are our customers. Now at the top, we have what's called the money bar and this is very helpful if you want to get a snapshot as to what your current outstanding invoice balance is that people owe you money. And then if there are any amounts that are overdue and then amounts that have been paid in the past 30 days. And then of course we also have an estimate section. If you've got estimates that you're working on that you are either about to send to clients or have sent to clients. And then this here is, or uh, billable expense charges that you have not yet applied to invoices, but we'll cover that in future videos. First of all, uh, I want to focus on how to process and how to enter and receive payment for an invoice. An invoice is a um, for, is an accrual transaction, and it is when you send a statement or a notification to a client or customer that they owe you money in exchange for product or service that you render to them. Invoices are typically only used when the customer does not pay you at the time the service is rendered or product is, is uh, fulfilled. Uh, you do not want to use an invoice typically if the customer pays you at the time they received, or in other words, at the same time they received the uh, service or product. In that case, we would use something called a sales receipt. But to start an invoice, we can do a number of things. There are multiple options here. We can either use the plus box at the top center and then below customers will have invoice. We can click that or we can go ahead and pick which customer we're working with. And let's say we're working with Jeff's Jalopy. So I'm going to click that customer record and here we have Jeff's jalopies, his address, and any other notes that you have added. We currently have an invoice outstanding uh, to Jeff, but uh, he has not paid that yet. But we're going to enter a new invoice. And how we do that is up in the top right, we click New Transaction, and a drop down menu appears, and then we have Invoice. So we click that invoice, and here comes the invoice screen. And pre filled for us is the name of the customer and their address and also you'll notice here that their email address shows up this is very very helpful um, highly recommend using this feature this allows you to send invoices electronically via email and now Intuit has added a feature which allows you to have a link that you can share uh, either by email, text, or uh, any other message system where if they click that link, it will bring up their invoice via the cloud and they can see it from any device at any time. And that is a very useful feature. But um, in this case, we'll keep the email in here and we'll send it by email when we're finished. So we want to fill out, the first of all, the terms. In this case, we would like Jeff to pay within 30 days. So today is September 12th. We'd like him to pay by October 12th. Uh, crew number, this is a customizable field here that has been set up um, in this particular QBO file. This will not necessarily appear in your file, in your company file. You can customize up to three of these fields currently. Now, we want to come down here to products and services and remember the products and services are uh, set up in a different section of QBO, but currently we do have products and services available to select. And let's say this was for a gardening 
service that we provided to Jeff's jalopies weekly gardening service and this is let's say it, it, they're going to do 10 hours at a rate of $50 an hour and QuickBooks will automatically calculate the amount over here in the amount column so we have $500 we're going to leave the tax blank because this is a service and typically services are not subject to sales tax now down here this is a message displayed on the invoice this will be seen by the client or customer so if you would like them to see a message on the invoice this is the place for it so now we have and we also have the statement memo that's optional both of these are optional we can attach any backup documentation let's say you have a timesheet or some other document to substantiate your invoice we can click this and then we can upload a file here and again this will take png files it will take excel spreadsheets uh, it will take word doc pdfs jpegs now we can select this box here to attach this document to the email that we send to the client with this invoice and that's very helpful if you want them to be able to see the backup to that invoice so now that we've entered all of our information we're ready to send it so let's click save and send and then we get a pop-up screen that shows our preview of the invoice so here's the invoice here's our company craig's design and landscaping services and the actual invoice bill to Jeff Chin, invoice number 1038, the payment date, uh, terms, and then the specific details and the amount. And here's our message that we had included, remember, in the uh, memo box or the uh, message box, rather. So all that looks good. And remember, we selected to attach and include the attachment in the email. That doesn't show up right here, but it will show up in the um, actual emails and attachment so here is our email itself that will go to jeff this particular text can be customized in the company settings so that you don't have to type the same thing every time you can customize that so but we're ready to send this to jeff so send and close yeah and it, it's going to tell us we can't send emails from the sample company that's fine but normally uh, when you do that, it will send an email and right here, this is our invoice and you'll see open, meaning it's open and still needs to be paid. But when we've sent it by email, you'll see in parentheses, it will say sent in parentheses. Okay. So you'll know, you'll be able to track, you'll know in here if you've actually sent it. But if I want to double check, I click the invoice again and there is a notification right here that tells me that I sent this by email on September 12th at 2.43 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So if you ever forget that you have sent an invoice, that's one way to check. There's also an activities, um, there's also an activities on the actual QBO file. You don't see it here, but on the actual QBO file, You'll see it down in this area. There'll be an activities, uh, no, sort of like a um, activity feed, and it will show when you sent the invoice. And you can actually send your customer or client messages in that particular message box, and they'll get a new email reminding them if you need to remind them that they haven't paid their invoice. It's a great way to gently remind customers or clients that they haven't yet paid you. So now we have an open balance here of, of actually 581, but we're going to only work with this $500. So let's say here we are a week later and Jeff has remitted payment for the invoice. And let's say he sent us a check in the mail and we have the check and we want to record the payment. So let's say we're back here at the home and we want to record that particular payment. The easiest way to do that is to click the plus at the top center and then receive payment under customers. And that will bring up a screen. We know the customer is Jeff Jalopies. So here's Jeff Jalopies. Um, the pay, let's say the payment date is September 19th. 
and he paid by check. So we're going to put payment method check and then check number one, two, three. And we have undeposited funds. I highly recommend using this and not your bank account because this way you can use QBO to track your bank deposits. And that will be a, another video that will go over that. The amount received is $500 for that invoice. And then here we have invoice 1038 is already checked for us. But remember, we have two invoices outstanding. So that's why this other one shows up. But we're not going to we're not going to mess with that today. We're just going to do 1038. You have the original amount here, which was what the invoice amount was, the amount of the open balance, which is 500, and then the amount of the payment. So we're typing in 500 for the payment. Amount to apply. We want to make sure that this has 500 because that way we will apply the $500 to the invoice. In this box, we can attach an image of the check if we would like. So I'm just going to pick a file and that will attach. And then when I'm done, I can click save and close. And it says receive payment one, two, three, save. Um, let's go back to customers. I want to show you what happened here. And we're going to go down to Jeff's. You'll see here September 19th, there's our payment. Check number one, two, three. Balance is zero. Total minus 500. So, which means this payment was applied to the invoice. So now we have an open balance of $81, which is what this overdue invoice is down here. And that is how you receive payment against an invoice. Hopefully, this video has been very informative for you. Please check out our additional videos at shortfinancial.com. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy bookkeeping.